Welcome back to Giants Franchise. In week 11, we took on the Bills and had one of our best games of the series, dropping over 40 points, beating the Buffalo Bills 45-17. to And I actually got a couple of donations in the super chat of the comments. I want to shout out to them. We have Scarab God donated $50, said, I love the series. Would it be worth it to go over each team's momentum abilities at the start of the game? Which the first time I read that, I read as superstar X-Factor abilities somehow. And I responded to it thinking that's what he meant. However, he means momentum factors. So when we play at Washington, they have individual momentum factors. We'll check those out at the start. Thank you to Scarab God for the 50. So this completely sucks. I'm sorry I screwed up. I was going through trying to clear space on my computer. These files are so big because the videos are so long. I record in a high quality and I needed space on my computer to be able to record more. And unfortunately, when I was going through selecting everything, I didn't realize that I didn't edit this game already so unfortunately a tremendous game was permanently deleted i downloaded software to restore permanently deleted files but it just didn't work these are like 40 gigabyte files it's just it's too much and it really really does suck because this was a super fun episode as you can see we beat the bills 45 17 and their offense really wasn't too bad they just couldn't find a way to score it was you know like big stops for our defense when we needed them and our offense was basically unbelievable. Cody Bailey with probably the best performance of his career, 408 yards passing, five touchdowns. Josh Allen was still pretty good, but Cody Bailey was on another level, completing 70% of his passes, but 408 yards and five touchdowns. Saquon, 23 attempts for 78 yards, but a lot of this was second half, just running the ball into the line. Got a touchdown and uh, receiving like unreal. Larry Smith, nine catches for 203 yards, and you can't see it, unfortunately. Nick Duvall, 10 catches for 117 yards and four touchdowns. It it sucks. Kendall Weathersby scores again. Kadarius Tony with a classic Kadarius Tony performance. Uh, but this, yeah, it, it really sucks. You guys couldn't see this episode. I thought it was a really good one, a really fun one. And I hate to hype it up that much and then have you guys not see it because it sucks. Uh, Caleb Claiborne got injured in the process, by the way. So he's going to be out for this next game at least. But man, I apologize, but we got to move on. And then Law Dog donated 15 in total. His first message says, change Cody Bailey's X-Factor ability to something else. You know what? As I've mentioned before, I can be bought. People wanted Gambit. Uh, we had another $5 from Jamin Daly. So we're going to try this out for today. The best quarterbacks learn to take calculated risks. When they enter the zone, they could not be intercepted by AI defenders, which is everybody, and have increased throw speed. So the increased throw speed, I think, is really cool. Not being able to be picked off by defenders, kind of cheesy. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Again, I can be bought off. So if you want to change it, fire away. Uh, and the other message for Law Dog said to start Jaden Rhodes, which... There isn't even a chance. Still, unfortunately, without Jalen Waddle, he's going to be gone for pretty much the entire season. He's out for the next six weeks. So it's really unfortunate when you trade for a player and he's playing really, really well for you, and then he's out for the season. But hopefully we will have him back for the playoffs. Jeffrey Simmons also is still sidelined, but we do return Darnay Holmes. Jeffrey Simmons will be back in a couple of games, thankfully. So we like to see that, but... Our receiving core is getting kind of thin. We are only bringing four receivers out today, which is not ideal. Uh, I do want to start the rookie Orlando Yarbrough over Tierra Tart. 6'2", 288, a little bit undersized, but he's got good strength. He's got good finesse moves, fantastic speed and acceleration for a defensive tackle. So I want to get the young guy some reps, the 21-year-old out of Clemson. He's going to play a lot more than we've seen him play before today. Another big injury is Caleb Claiborne. Pulled his groin. He's out three weeks. You know, he plays well on occasion. I think John Bost has been the better player between the two of them just because he's a bit better in coverage. But uh, Claiborne always seems to be making plays on special teams. Not this week or next. Aziz Ojolari returns as well. So we're getting back to full strength, but then we just keep losing guys. Getting Darnay Holmes back in the slot is huge. It limits Victor Farr's playtime. You guys remember the first round pick out of Florida, but you know what? He's still a rookie, still developing. I think that's okay. And we're going to be facing 
the commanders today are yeah no they're the commanders now i'm like okay i'm like are they football team i forgot the order but they have matthew mcclure who is a top pick for them at quarterback and i want to say he played fairly well against us in the past i can't exactly recall maybe you guys can and after we upgrade here our training our, we should get cody bailey with an upgrade point so we're actually going to unlock a new superstar ability because he'll be an uh, 85 overall, I believe, right? So with him going up to an 85 overall, he'll unlock another ability slot, I think, but also new abilities. So here he is. For 85 overall field general, we could unlock that right now. We get another ability slot, and what unlocks at 85 overall field general? So inside Deadeye, Conductor, Red Zone Deadeye. I think we'll just do Field General for now. He temporarily moves up to an 88. Plus 4 Awareness is the boost. Okay, well, it's not exactly what I wanted, but we do get another ability here. And the question is, which one do I want? I think Inside Deadeye would be good. I think so. Yeah, let's do that one. If there's a better one we can actually use right now, be sure to let me know down in the comments section below. And let's hop in and play the Commanders. Week 12, we're 7-4. and four. They're 2-8, and eight, but they have an 87 overall defense. I really don't think they should be slept on here. This is probably a pretty good team. Chase Young, Deron Payne, Jamin Davis. I wouldn't sleep on them. And what a season Nick Duvall is having, by the way. Already 14 touchdowns, over 1,100 yards receiving. He's been incredible. There was a couple weeks in a row where he went without a touchdown. But last week... Four. So I would say he's having his best season ever. And on top of that, it's only week 12. So a lot of room for growth still. He could be chasing down Rob Gronkowski for arguably the best tight end season of all time. We're going to start with the football offense. We'll take the field. Greg Sheldon back to return. And man, it is looking vibrant and beautiful here. In Landover, Maryland, home of the Commanders, Jaden Rhodes with a block and Sheldon to the open field. Greg Sheldon, for the first time in a minute, has housed a kick. And the opening kickoff of the game goes all the way back. It'll be 7-0 Giants. Greg Sheldon starts to the right, reverses back. Jaden Rhodes with a great block to seal off the lane. And Sheldon with incredible speed to make it a touchdown. What a start. Didn't even get a chance to consider the momentum factors because we didn't even get a chance to send our offense onto the field. Greg Sheldon puts up points all by himself. It's 7-0. All right, the commanders and Matthew McClure will take the field. He is their young quarterback having about a rookie quarterback type season, 2,500 yards passing, 15 touchdowns to eight interceptions. Could be better, could be worse. I think Cody Bailey was worse in his season one. Also a normal development draft pick quarterback. But McClure is a pretty high overall, just like Cody Bailey was. So I think there's actually a decent chance that he plays well against us. 74 overall, but I think that's playing down with morale. I think he's actually a 76 usually, as we see Tua Tungabailoa benched for McClure. Antonio Gibson is their starting running back with Brian Robinson, potentially getting power back carries. Lamar Gray is at fullback. Receiver one is Darnell Mooney. They also have John Dotson, Diami Brown, and Quan Dodson. Albert Okwebenon plays at tight end with Adam Troutman, potentially seeing some time as well. Walker Little at left tackle. Alex Leatherwood, the former first-round pick of the Raiders at left guard. Chase Roulier, Trey Turner, and Sam Cosme. Hook'em horns at right tackle makes up the offense. Now here are the momentum factors. To run the ball. Dontrell Cobb with a big hit. Can't bring down Antonio Gibson. A move over so you can see them. So for us, tunnel vision, some of the home team's receivers' icons are hidden during the play. I don't really know how that factors in against the CPU, as McClure will test Farley, doing a decent job to get a hand in there, but it's a nice catch. It's a good back shoulder throw. The timing on that was impeccable. Our other momentum factor is home team has trouble blocking, so blitzes could be good. And then for the commanders, away team change of direction worsens. As it's going to be play action. And another good throw. Big hit by Gore. But Caleb Farley being picked on here early. Money with two O's living up to his name. But a change of direction worsens with field conditions each quarter. So that's a very interesting factor there for the commanders. As this is actually a screen. Larry Ogunjobi on the field. The beast out of Charlotte. Not enough speed. And McClure is just driving. I'm bringing in Orlando Yarbrough. 
Uh, away team has trouble blocking for rattled O-line, and they also have tunnel vision as well. So we got to be super sure that we don't give up a ton of momentum as Jahan Dotson is the recipient this time. I was trying to work with the momentum factors, trying to read those. I didn't really know what my coverage responsibility was with Xavier McKinney, but it was too late to get off of him. But we're locked in now. We're paying attention. We're focused. And this is a run to Antonio Gibson. McKinney's there for a nice tackle. And I'll slide back over to a more comfortable right side of the screen. Ooh, play action. Nice throw up the seam. Unbelievable. McClure really looking to be the real deal here. Five for five with completions to four separate receivers if you include the running back on that screen. First and goal now from the two. We've just been caught a little bit uh, off balance here. Or off balance. And Brian Robinson shows off some pretty good balance. Stays on his feet, gets into the end zone. And the score is tied just like that. Really couldn't get into a rhythm. And you know what? Thanks for the 50, but... That touchdown's on you, man. Who knows how good the defense could have been if we were locked in. Going over momentum factors. And I appreciate it. Just like I appreciate allowing that touchdown. All right, Sheldon. Attempt number two. Can we have a similar result? No. No was the answer. All right, finally the offense is on the field. Oh, and then we got some blocks. Saquon Barkley. Could be a focal point of our offense today. They're actually not going to give him the first down on that, despite marking that as a 10-yard gain. We look about an inch or two shy, so we should be able to convert here. And Barkley's going to, and he's going to put the football on the ground. It's recovered by Washington. Oh, my God, dude. The fumbles in recent weeks have been intolerable. And we've already shown we can't stop this offense, so this game could be troublesome. Saquon usually is so sure-handed, but... You know, some fumbles in recent weeks, and it's contributing to our potential demise. You know, we're only 1-2, in two, I believe, in our last couple of games. The story Jackson's going to jump that route and force the first incompletion from McClure. But we got to play better. I know we had a big win last week against Buffalo. Got to continue that momentum. And uh, it's, not, it's not looking good here. We were off to a great start, but it's gone considerably downhill since the first play of the game. Third and 10, though. This is a big opportunity. We're going to pass commit. Could have blitzed on this. We're going to rock man coverage. And we got to be all over that. Dory Jackson allowing a first down. It's tight coverage, but it's not tight enough. It looks like a draw. Trying to get on that. Good tackle. That is the rookie Orlando Yarbrough with one of his first career tackles. Love to see that. Let's bring Derek Cooper inside. Now they're going to move him right back out. Okay. Want him closer to the line. So we can defend that run. But he's blocked. Big hit by Gore, first down commanders. Felt like I moved Derek Cooper right to the perfect spot, and he chose to go right back to where he was, as that's actually going to be picked by Caleb Farley. McClure with his first big mistake. Caleb Farley with his sixth interception of the year. That one, pretty easy. And he's had some easy ones this year, but, I mean, McClure just threw it right to him. And that, that was just not open. That was just not open at all. Dontrell Cobb there as well. You know, I, I can respect targeting Darnell Mooney. I really can. But that was not the time. Actually, you know what we could try here? Wide receiver screen's a bit dangerous, but they're not pressed up. We're going to get it in the hands of the speedy Kendall Weathersby. And there just really wasn't a lot of space to work with. We only managed to get a yard. Second and nine. Oh, I thought that route was going to continue. Oh, my God. It's an interception. They're throwing it right back. Looking like Matthew McClure on that one. Dude. Uh, that's just a case of not remembering the route combo. I thought for sure he was going to run a slant across the screen and be wide open. Oh, man. Huge mental mistake for me. But you got to admit, that slant would have been wide. I mean, look at look at that. Look at this space. The leverage of these defenders is across the screen. We have 98 speed, I think, with Larry Smith. He's running to daylight as I try to throw. The problem with that is the route was over, and it was picked. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's the kind of thing that happens over here, unfortunately. Couldn't run with that. How does Micah McFadden constantly find himself on the field? 
I think he kind of has to be here, though, with no Caleb Claiborne, because we have Derek Cooper in at left end. Aziz Ojolari in. Quick throw to the flat. McKinney cannot stop the touchdown. Cole Turner into the end zone. Commanders take the lead for the first time. It'll be 14-7, 14 unanswered. Not exactly insurmountable, but uh, we'll have to play better than we have so far on offense. It's been, it's been ugly. We have 14 yards right now. They have 108, but we've barely had any time on offense. Saquon fumbled pretty quickly uh, out the gate. And uh, Cody Bailey obviously threw that brain-dead interception that had nothing to do with me. He just needs to be more accurate, I think. Okay. Can we get one-on-one -on -one here? Can we just streak Duval. I think we're going to try it. Oh, he should be wide open. Nick Duval wide open down the sideline. What happened? Cody Bailey airing it out for the big tight end. Would love for that to be a touchdown. But I'm just thankfully we got the big play anyway. Very thankful. Cody Bailey just lobbing it up. Nick Duval, you know, running underneath it, but just not quite fast enough. Very close to being a touchdown, but unfortunately could not get all the way down there. Very bold coverage decision by the commanders. Because we're going to check down to Saquon. Show off some power. Kind of. It's really hard to make defenders miss in this game. Trucks, you never actually truck them over. It's really difficult to actually juke. Never really see that happen. And we're sacked. I canceled play action and he didn't do it. Right trigger cancels play action and he just refused. Third and nine after the sack. I really hope they blitz here, but they bluff it. I think we have Duvall anyway. Good ball from Bailey and it's Nick Duvall, the big tight end again, getting us into scoring position inside the 10. That's the end of the first quarter. We're going to switch sides of the field and you know what? Probably target number 88 in the red zone. Duvall actually in the zone, by the way. So they probably should try and double team him. Could create opportunities for Barkley. Not on that play. I mean, this is 100% a throw to Nick Duvall. It can't not be. Good defense. We're all tied up here in Landover. You got to cover Nick Duvall. He's got five touchdowns in like the last six quarters. Last five in like a, a sixth quarter. I don't know how long we are into this one, but... <laughs> It's the very, very start of the second quarter, and he had four touchdowns last game. Somebody do the math. Also, I had a question for somebody doubting that this was all Madden. Why is the kick meter going so slow? It's the kick accuracy rating that affects that. I know I can't actually change it as I've showed a billion times, but yes. The setting here is all Madden. And the sliders, if you've seen when I've started videos showing you the sliders for everyone that has asked, I've started so many videos like that. If, if you skip through, sucks to be you. It's a fun rhyme to remember. I think our entire offensive production has been Nick Duvall so, so far. I mean, the special teams touchdown is different with Greg Sheldon. But I think we got I mean, basically every yard. Saquon, like, did a little bit, but he also fumbled earlier, so I'm not really too pleased with him still. But man, Nick Duvall is something else. Quick throw to the flat. Wow, we misjudged that. <laughs> I thought for sure that was taken care of. I thought for sure. I don't know. I, we just couldn't get there. That's no good. That's some pretty good change of direction. Big hit from Gore. But a big gain from Gibson. Whatever we do right now, it doesn't seem to be enough. If McClure didn't gift Caleb Farley with an interception earlier, I'm not really sure where we'd be right now. 21 to something. Oh, that's a big play. Nearly a sack off the edge by McKinney. Dontrell Cobb, the king of New York, kiss the ring. It's been a while since people have been able to say that. Uh, finishes that play off, thankfully. Good job to get to the QB because McClure was breaking off that sack. Big awareness there from Dontrell Cobb. McClure going deep. McKinney got to make a play. And he doesn't. It, I thought it was picked. It's a touchdown, Washington. Jahan Dotson. How? How does that happen? McClure just rearing back, throwing it 50 yards into the end zone. McKinney went for the football and just whiffed. Adoree Jackson playing catch-up. 
Oh my god, dude. We've allowed 21 points, and it's just the start of the second quarter. A little RPO action on second and 10. How successful is this going to be? Uh, a little bit, because Barkley actually broke a tackle without fumbling. It's going to be third down and five. The problem with Nick Duvall having that X-Factor activated... Oh, Cody Bailey's got it activated too. So we cannot be picked off here. But the problem with Nick Duvall is if we target him and he doesn't catch it, he loses the X-Factor. Oh, God. I forgot about the play clock. I don't know why I thought it would pause when I was doing that. Okay. As I was saying, when we target him and he doesn't come down with it for whatever reason, as we've put ourselves in a tough spot here. But he loses the X-Factor activated. So... I, I almost am more hesitant to target him because I want to keep that active. We're going to go for Larry Smith across the formation, though. He's got speed. You can't outrun 29. Big third down conversion. A lot of stupidity from me early on here. But we uh, don't end up paying for it right now. But I, I like to keep Nick Duvall activated so he can win those jump balls versus one-on-one -on -one coverage. So I'm a little bit more hesitant if, oh man, maybe this is going to be a tight window, bad throw, knock down and complete. Just don't want to target him as much, which is, I feel like, counterintuitive. So maybe we should just target him anyway. They're not doubling him. Lob it up. Nick Duvall down the field. Big time catch against the safety. I thought he was actually just going to run by Cam Curl at first, but no. Oh, and he's down. And he's back up. Four catches for 122 yards, and he's the tight end. I really thought he was going to run by him, though. Ended up being a contested catch instead of a clean route to the end zone. Barkley looking for space. It's a good run. Saquon down to the one. Jumbo, three tight ends to the right side and 13 personnel. We're running to the other side. We got a block. Not really. That's got to be a touchdown. I, it just has to be. Has to be. Third and goal from the one. More runs. Hand off. Barkley. Power. And there it is. We have found the end zone with Saquon Barkley. Third time's the charm. Showed it off there. 21 up with four minutes to go here in the first half. I mean, you can't say the first half hasn't been exciting. Three turnovers. A kick return touchdown. Massive bombs down the field from each team. A fumble going along with the turnover theme interception i mean you've got you got one of every play type in this game passing touchdowns rushing touchdowns deep bombs for touchdowns short touchdowns what haven't we seen we've seen sacks even what an electric first half going deep farley get a hand up oh my god what a throw from mcclure it ends up being called incomplete i want to see how close this was because that looked to me like he might have got Maybe a butt cheek down or two. Here's a throw. Mooney, change of direction, mid-air. Excellent body control. And to me, I would have said... I would have said, ah, I guess the knee comes down just out. Oh, he didn't even catch it. Oh, I thought he caught it. I, Farley, it's that left hand. Left hand gets in on the ball, knocks it away. Would they have called this a completion? It's tough to see where those feet are. It is to see if those are actually down or not. Anyway, uh, Farley makes sure it doesn't even matter. Jars the football loose at the last moment. Second down. That's all that is. It's a loud out. It's like a big foul ball home run in baseball. McClure with plenty of time. I mean, that's such BS. It's ridiculous. They were going to cheat me one way or the other. Darnell Mooney. Money with two O's. Making plays for days. And McClure with just all day. Throws a wobbler. Mooney goes up. Survives a McKinney hit. Runs past Caleb Farley. Dude, McClure is looking like the superstar X-Factor quarterback in this game. He's thrown some darts. I am highly impressed. Tried to get to the outside. Couldn't do it. Edmonds can't make the hit. Somebody drill him. Dude, get off the block. It's amazing how often I'm stuck on blocks with Dontrell Cobb. Is his block shedding still in the 70s? I don't think so. Maybe it is. Sure feels like it, but he's almost a 90 overall. Although we haven't got an upgrade point in what feels like forever. That was weird. Man coverage against Gibson. We got to overcommit. He might be running a swing here. 
He is. Oh my goodness. We just we can't match up with these receivers right now. Darnell Mooney and John Dotson are doing whatever they want to do. I mean, it seems like Dotson hasn't made too much of an impact until you remember that deep bomb over the top. Great throw. I mean, McClure seems like he's going to be the bane of my existence for the next decade of Giants franchise here for the Commanders in division. But they're not putting a great team around him, I guess, or he's not playing this well consistently, which is probably more likely given his stat line. Uh, like 15 touchdowns, 8 picks coming to the game. So given his stat line, you can say, you know what, maybe he's not this guy all the time as he's going to just throw it away. It's a good decision on second down. But yeah, they're only 2-8. and eight. Not really that good, obviously. But we've been there. We've been there, and we can't keep up with that. Oh, it's a touchdown, Diami Brown. <sighs> Man coverage has not been working out, but neither has zone coverage. So I don't know how we're going to stop the commanders just yet. I'll let you know when I figure it out. 59 seconds in a dream. Three timeouts, and most importantly, Nick Duvall. With Nick Duvall in the game, I mean, Cody Bailey has his X-Factor activated as well. You like our chances in this spot. Quick throw to Larry Smith. Really? That felt like a catchable ball. Guess not. Bailey's out of the zone now. Only took one play. Second down. She's going to check down. Oh, and it's another drop. Dude. Is that a... Is that a <laughs> A momentum factor? We have a case of the dropsies? No, it isn't. We just we just suck. Do we give up and just run the ball or try to just take the top off the defense? We're not going to have time on this Larry Smith route. I know this is a big Chiefs play, but I don't see us having time. We're going to throw that ball. Kadarius Tony, We got it to him, and Tony has space and speed. Kadarius Tony outrunning Cam Curl. It's a 75-yard touchdown out of nowhere. What is this first half? Cody Bailey on the run over the DBs. And Tony with surprising speed to turn that to a touchdown. Usually, I mean, even with Larry Smith, high 90 speed, we can't turn that into a touchdown. But against the inverted cover two, Kadarius Tony finds the space. Cam Curl slightly out of position, and we made him pay for it. What a first half. Yeah, it's, it's going to be like this the whole game. We've allowed 222 passing yards in the first half and three touchdowns. Just to just to Matt McClure. Check down. McClure under pressure. Sacked by Thibodeau. We're going to call a timeout for him. Have a blast. I know that seems crazy, and it is. But with the coverage props or return abilities of Greg Sheldon, I, I like our chances to do something with a punt as Thibodeau has back-to-back -back sacks. Kayvon Thibodeau lighting it up here recently. Gotta love it. Thibodeau actually in the zone as well. It's a run. Somebody get to him. Oh, missed that one with Gore. That's bad. We're going to call a timeout, though. We'll have 19 seconds. And now a dream. Would have loved to have saved a timeout. But we had to burn him, obviously. I know it seems crazy to use my timeouts there. But what am I going to do? Bring him to the uh, second half? Like, I, I can understand your apprehension saying like, oh, well, you, like, you could allow a touchdown. You could allow points. Like, what is the best case scenario? Like, a Hail Mary attempt. And that's fair. But you know what? Sometimes you got to try it. And I know we're just running now. So it's like, why even do that in the first place? But we didn't know what the situation was going to be. Wanted to give Greg Sheldon an opportunity. But that is the first half. It is 28-28. Electricity flowing here at FedEx Field. It's been a wild first half. We got to play a little bit better on defense. Offense has started to heat up a bit, but our defense has been disastrous. Something has got to change. Oh, great. Commanders get the football to start the uh, second half. Not ideal. Not great. Don't love to see that, but it is what it is. Defense, show me something. Oh, we're only averaging 8.1 yards per carry to Antonio Gibson. Jesus. Thibodeau out of the zone? We don't get to carry that into the second half? He's feeling it, though. Oh, make a play. Gore, big hit. Come on. We're going to try more zone coverage. I just feel like we can't hang in, man. I don't want to see another half of this. 
It's a nice tackle by Yarbrough. That could have been bad. Antonio Gibson's given us a really, really tough time so far. I know I just said we're going to do a lot more zone, but we're going to try a man blitz here on second and six from midfield. I think this could be a run, though. It is. Cobb sheds the wrong way. Nice tackle by Dexter Lawrence, and it's third and three. Let's do something like cover three, hard flat. I mean, we're going to be playing hard flats on this, so we just got to make a play. If he wants to check down, that's fine. We'll cover the middle. McClure going deep. Adoree Jackson, get a hand on it! I feel like I need an exorcism, dude, because I got the devil in me after this. I, I, I want to do bad things. Switched on to Adoree Jackson. You can see that I hit SWAT. He tried. McClure just throws it long. He goes, fuck it. Receiver down there somewhere. And you know what? It works every time. Darnell Mooney is bitching my corners. Good route from Tony. He's got speed. Kadarius Tony starting to turn up a little bit. Two extremely explosive plays from him. Would have been nice to see that get turned into a touchdown, obviously. But... We'll take that. That is certainly a really nice play. He's already at 95 yards receiving. I know Duvall has exceeded that by quite a bit already. But Tony really isn't that guy usually. We're going to air it out for Duvall. Oh, would have been an incredible catch. Second and 10. Good slant from Tony. Dude, if he actually catches the ball, we have a superstar in our hands. He just drops it too often for a guy with 90s catching. make a play Saquon let's go huge broken tackle absolutely massive that's why you just dunk it down sometimes when you have a guy like Saquon Barkley in the backfield because one-on-one -on -one, he should be able to make somebody miss he should be able to go through somebody and make a big time play they blitz guess what Hilliard get off me Saquon big time play Saquon's gonna get it again just burst through that hole Saquon with speed let's go about nine or ten for Saquon Little RPO action. Saquon out of the game, unfortunately. Let's see what coverage looks like. Quick throw to Duvall. That's a good result. Barkley back in the game, which means one thing. He's getting it. Saquon turning it on. Third and inches. We're going back to Barkley. And it's going to work out. Saquon Barkley, touchdown. Number two of the game. Let's go. Saquon Barkley tying it up here on the road and being... Very, very polite with his celebration. Pinky up on the T-sip. Saquon thinks we're in England. CTA. Going deep. Farley! Let's go! Big takeaway from Caleb Farley! His second interception of the game. This one considerably more difficult than the first. First one was a gift. This one, I mean, McClure made him work for it. Just lobbing it down the field again. Darnell Mooney can't work his superpowers this time, though, and we got the football back. Saquon with the drop, dude. Don't drop the ball. Please. Oh, gosh, dude. The drops are killing me. Do we go deep here? Nope. Get it out! Not in time for Weathersby. Fourth and four from the 49. We haven't seen Wyatt Anthony in a minute. We've been scoring too much. So I hate to do this for you. I know Wyatt Anthony can drill from 66. Listen. This is fourth and four from midfield. A punt maybe nets us 30 yards of field positioning, which is good. We've been allowing points anyway. Oh, I do not want that to go to Jaden Rhodes. We're going to have to flip this. We're going to throw it to Nick Duvall, and it works. Big fourth down conversion. We were thrown at Nick Duvall no matter what. And it worked out. I actually love the idea of a play-action pass here. Who's going to get open? We're going for Weathersby. One-on-one. -on -one. Wow, that's that's good recovery speed. I feel like something else could have been open on that play. But that's all right. We're just going to go for Tony. Nearly intercepted. Uh, needed to, like, use the precision pass on that to throw, like, back shoulder. Wide Anthony going to come out. A more manageable field goal, but for him... You know he can hit from anywhere. And I know it's going slow. It's just his kick accuracy rating. I am not somehow managing to change it to rookie. Although I don't get why at some places we play, it is super, super fast. It's uh, a little weird. 
I, there's got to be some momentum factor going into it. Because I remember when we played the Bears, it went extraordinarily fast. And I just was not ready for it at all. But it's nice and slow today. McClure going deep. Farley, it, that cannot be a catch. I mean, how is that almost a catch? That's crazy. Thankfully, it wasn't. We're going to do a little bit of blitzing here. Oh, oh, it's a screen. Get out there. Dexter Lawrence, it's up to you. Can't make the play. Bikini's there. It's going to be fourth and three. We force a punt anyway. Let's see if we see it before the end of the third quarter. It's going to be tight. We'll see if Johnston wants to try it. Here's the snap. Final play of the third quarter will be a Greg Sheldon punt return. We got a block or two. Change of direction. Sheldon. All right, that's not exactly what I wanted to do. We got locked into an animation. It's not a bad return, though. Could have been better, though, I think. Huge chance to extend our lead. Right now, it's only a field goal. Making this a two-possession game could be massive. That's not a bad start. Second and inches. I feel like this is all no-risk, high-reward. Even with a tackle for loss, I don't even think it matters. Because then it would be still third and short. But we get the first down anyway. Okay, second and eight. Probably going to pass here. <laughs> Operating at an empty. Throw it to Tony. He makes a nice catch. Uh, just playing it a little bit too conservatively there. I could have seen things being open uh, more down the field. I'm sure that they were. Just looking short. Trying to make it more third and manageable. And those routes are on top of each other. You just have to throw it away. I know third down, you don't really want to throw it away in that spot when it's a long field goal anyway. But I didn't really want to throw a pick, so... We'll bring Wyatt Anthony on again. Make it a six-point game. Still only one possession, unfortunately. But... At least we're coming away with points. And you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, the Commanders are probably the team in this series that, is, that have given us the most trouble. Like, they've been an absolute thorn in my side. The Hail Mary in Season 1 or 2, right? I think that was Season 1 or 2. Why are they so good? And also, we never met the defense. Is Daniel Brinkley on the field? Do you guys remember the player you wanted? He is. He's their CB1 over Kendall Fuller, who's much higher rated. 82 overall. I haven't seen him do a whole lot today. It's a run right up the middle. I just abandoned that. Gibson's still on his feet. Takes a huge shot from Farley. He's over 100, though. I have not defended the run well today at all. That one was especially noticeable. They just didn't... They haven't run dive the entire game. You just don't expect to have to play that. Oh, there we would have been. Big hit from Cobb. No, it's shaken off by McClure. He gets the throw away. You are one-on-one -on -one with the quarterback, Dontrell Cobb, and you can't finish that play? That is the easiest sack you're ever going to have. Went for the hit stick. And uh, it did not work out. Bossed. Big hit. Not at that time. Dude, you're telling me if Cody Bailey was one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker, he'd just shake off a hit stick? This guy's built different. He is built different. Got the check down. Oh, that's a sick move. What the? F oh, my God, dude. I'm ready for him to continue up the sideline. I'm expecting him to get tackled. Not only does he break the tackle, he does it in such a way that he's able to outrun the leverage of Dontrell Cobb on the spin move and get the first down. I mean, that's... He's just better. Just better. Throw a pick. Oh, that's a fumble! Recovered by Aziz Ojulari! It's the speed of Derek Cooper off the edge. The one variable here will be, was his arm coming forward? I don't think it was. Derek Cooper flying at him, forces the fumble, and that could be the ball game. He was not throwing. That is a fumble. That's a huge difference maker. Full momentum. Good block, Saquon. Carry us home. A field goal in this spot, though, makes it a two-possession game. So we absolutely need points at any cost. Let's go, Saquon. That's a really nice run. It's first down. The powerful Zach Beck will get a carry. He's his space up the field and a block. Zach Beck showcasing the speed. 25 yards right up the gut. Zach Beck. Love to see it for number 44. The dance moves are questionable. The running ability is not. Dialing up a screen. There's Saquon. 
We got blocks, maybe? Uh, maybe should have gone inside. Larry Smith again. You got to be fast here, Larry. That'll work. I know we get out of bounds. Clock's going to stop. Not really too worried about it. I don't really see the clock as being too much of a factor right now. Just need to get in that end zone. It's a good way to do it. Kendall Weathersby, the rookie, just keeps on scoring. More opportunities for him with Jalen Waddle sidelined. Kendall Weathersby, we know he has incredible speed. He plays a very limited role for us, but he's got like four or five touchdowns up to this point. And it's on the whole season, but it's also four or five touchdowns in the last four or five games. He has been a touchdown machine. CPU's advocating for two-point conversion attempts here. We're going to try it. Barkley will get it. It's 49-35 out of nowhere. The McClure fumble proving to be huge in this game. Less than four minutes to play. Washington down by two possessions. They will need to work quickly. But luckily for them, they've been able to work quickly pretty much the entire game. They're actually going to opt to run. We can't get off the block. Come on, dude. I'll be honest with you, though. The last thing I expected was a run there. Time is not on their side. Thibodeau had one-on-one -on -one with a tight end. Give me a big hit there, boss. Up by 14. I'm just so content to let them check down nickel and dime us all they want. It's just not going to work. Like, we're going to keep tackling you inbounds. Time is going to keep ticking off the clock. I think we solidified a win here. It's going to take something magical for the commanders to win the game. I just don't think it's going to be enough. It's a good start for him, though. Didn't get out of bounds, though, so that is a two-minute warning. McClure going to launch. Completes it, but I think he's still in bounds. Oh, they're calling him out? That's BS. All right, clock stops. They're still holding on to three of their timeouts. Really would prefer to keep him out of the end zone here. Really would prefer that. Get back across the middle. Trying to cover everybody. Time's ticking off the clock. I don't necessarily mind this. He's had 40 minutes to throw. We're going to rush somebody else. Put a little bit more pressure on him, and it's a throw away. But that wasted like 20 seconds. McClure under pressure, and he's sacked by Yarbrough. We put him into the starting lineup, and the rookie with a huge play. His first career sack could not have come at a bigger time. And Glenn Gore on the coverage stops another unbelievable Darnell Mooney catch. It is fourth and goal. Game is on the line. Get back to the end zone here. No touchdowns. Throw. End zone. Picked off by big play Darnay. And that should do it. Holmes going down. 47 seconds on the clock. I'm sure Washington will call their timeouts. But it shouldn't be enough. Okay, well, they're playing pretty good run D. It's going to be third and 14. Do we just run here, take more time off the clock? Is that Chase Young in the zone? I think we go RPO here and probably look to run. What is that? We didn't hand the ball off. Sack's not really going to hurt us too bad because we didn't fumble, thankfully. If you hit nothing on an RPO, it goes to the running back, right? Why did he not hand it off? I'm so confused. Larry Smith ends up coming wide open here, by the way. We were, all, we were already sacked, so it didn't really factor. But why did Saquon not get the ball? So confused. It's as good as a run anyway. We were backed up to our own end zone, though. That's not great. But I just don't think there's enough time for Washington to do anything. I mean, they're going to need a miracle. It's pretty much what it's going to come down to. They will need a miracle to make it happen. It's a good start, but as long as we keep them in bounds here... Clock's going to tick. This might be the final play of the game, and it is. We're going to walk out of here with the win. Final snap. Let's see if they can make it a little bit closer to check down. Keep them out of the end zone. Took three guys, but we got it done. Final in Landover. 49-35. The Giants, led by Cody Bailey, will end up with a big win. That's two in a row for us, and this one was looking ugly. It was looking like a loss for some time in there. We could not stop the Washington offense, but big plays on defense when it mattered most. Playing a young quarterback, big turnovers are the story of this game. And McClure played well. 
like 400 yards, four touchdowns, but the three picks and the fumble are why they end up losing. Cody Bailey with a dumb pick in the beginning. That's on me. But other than that, three touchdowns, 314 yards. Saquon, I thought, played well. Yards per carry goes under four because of some garbage time action. We couldn't stop Antonio Gibson. I don't really know what that was about. Zach Beck with a nice carry in there as well. Yep, Saquon with a fumble. It is what it is. But Nick Duvall, what a first half. Didn't really do a whole lot the rest of the game because we really we ran the ball and were on defense a lot. But did have a touchdown on 135 yards receiving. Tony, great game. Four catches for 111 and a TD. Also a touchdown for Weathersby on, I believe, only two targets. Caught both of them. Saquon, I think, with a couple of drops in there. Yeah. And then uh, defensively, Glenn Gore had 11 tackles, was everywhere. Thibodeau with two sacks. Huge for him. Half a sack for McKinney. Big, big play by Orlando Yarbrough. Big sack. Uh, one for Dontrell Cobb, too. Should have been more, but he missed one. Two picks for Farley. One for Darnay Holmes. And let me tell you, it was the forced fumble by Derek Cooper, who left with injury, recovered by Aziz Ojolari, that I think is the reason we win the game. Incredible. Dude, I feel like we got to have an upgrade for Orlando Yarbrough at some point, like to star development. I'd love a challenge for him. He was just a force, I feel like, in this game as we improve to 8-4. and four. Bad news is in week 13, we take on a very talented 8-3 and three Chargers squad with an 87 overall. They are very good. The weekly awards have Caleb Farley as your player of the week. Good for him. Two picks. But that is going to do it for this episode. I think Orlando Yarbrough made a huge impact in one of his first ever games for us. Really hadn't been playing a whole lot. Buried on the depth chart. We spent a second round pick on him. Just hadn't really seen the field too much. This is his only game played the entire year. Four tackles, a sack. Good stuff for him. I was really, really impressed. A stat update for you all. Cody Bailey. Over 4,000 yards passing. Really, really impressive. I mean, he leads the league in passing yards by a lot right now. Although Lamar Jackson has 31 touchdowns. And Edward Sloan, who we actually passed on in the Cody Bailey draft, has 34 touchdowns. Playing great. But, you know, we're throwing the ball a decent amount. But when you see in comparison to Teddy Bridgewater, he has five fewer attempts. It's not that crazy, but Cody Bailey just lighting it up. 9.3 yards per attempt. Rushing, you know, Saquon in that top 10 range has 11 touchdowns, which is pretty impressive. And then receiving, Nick Tufal, 87 catches, leads the league. 12, 56 yards, leads the league by a lot. And 15 touchdowns also, I would say, leads the league by a lot. This is not only the most impressive tight end season of all time. It's one of the most impressive receiving seasons of all time. Nick Duvall, I believe in 12 games this year, is putting together some type of stat line. Already a career high in touchdowns. Chasing down his rookie season for yards. He has been a different type of an animal, averaging over 100 yards per game as a tight end special player. But thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.